Mr. Picard with another geometry video. Today we're talking about special right triangles. This kind of triangle we're talking about is called a 45 45 90 triangle. It's common when we talk about special right triangles to reference the angle measures of the different vertices. So in a 45 45 90 triangle, as we call it, that means we're talking about a triangle that has measures 45 45 and 90. So that's a 45 45 90 triangle. You'll notice as we look at these 45, 45, 90 triangles that they're all exactly the same shape. Here's a theorem called the 45, 45, 90 triangle theorem. It says in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, both legs are congruent and the length of the hypotenuse is square root of two times the length of a leg. Let's talk about this first piece here. It says both legs are congruent. If we look at a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and we note that these angles are 45 degrees each. And this is 90. We know by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem that because these angles are congruent, the sides opposite those angles must be congruent as well. So we know it's an isosceles triangle. So the fact that we have two 45 degree angles tells us that we also have two congruent legs. Let's look at the second part now. The length of the hypotenuse is square root of two times the length of a leg. In order to prove that, let's just look at a triangle and we'll assign just a random value x for the length of one of the legs and just assume this is a 45, 45, 90. Notice that if I indicate that these two angles are congruent, then that means they have to be 45 degrees each since this is 90. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle and I'm interested to know if this is x how long are the other two sides? How long is this side and how long is this side? Well, the second side here, the, the leg down the bottom, that's probably the easier side to figure out. It's also X, it has to be X. What about the hypotenuse? I'll call that C for a moment since it's the hypotenuse. And we can just use the Pythagorean theorem here. We know that X squared plus X squared is equal to C squared. We also know from algebra that X squared plus X squared is two X squared. So 2x squared equals c squared. And now we'll take the square root of both sides. So c is equal to the square root of 2x squared, which is the same as the square root of x squared times 2, which is the same as x times the square root of 2. So we see that the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 triangle is always equal to the length of the leg times the square root of two. Let's look at a few examples. Each of these examples will find the variable x, and here's the first one. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. We can tell because the numbers are given to us, and we're asked to find x. The first part of the theorem says that in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the legs are congruent or equal in length, and so this must be 12. Let's look at this one. Here I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. I know one of the legs. Uh, we're not asked to find the second leg, but we know that it's eight now. And so we have to identify the relationship between the length of a leg and the length of the hypotenuse in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. It is such that the hypotenuse, the length hypotenuse, is equal to the length of the leg, eight times the square root of two. So the answer here is eight square root of two. Let's look at one more. In this example, we know the hypotenuse. We're trying to find the leg. We know this is x, of course. So once we find this x, we'll have this one as well. How do we do it? We, the relationship works exactly the same way. The hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of 2. Of course, in this instance, we need to do a little additional algebra in order to solve for x. So we'll divide both sides by the square root of 2. Divide by the square root of 2. And we end up with x is equal to 6 over the square root of 2. That is correct mathematically, but we always want to put that in simplest radical form. And so in order to get it there, we multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And so we end up with 6 square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to 3 square root of 2. That's our final answer, 3 square root of 2. And of course, if we needed a number, we could put that in a calculator and then round it to some particular value. Here's another one. Notice this one has a radical in it already. So we're starting with a radical, but the rule works exactly the same way. 
the rule says that the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the leg, 2 square root of 3, times the square root of 2. So we lay it out the same exact way, and now we just need to simplify. x then is equal to 2 times the square root of 6. And that's our answer. So the relationship is fixed. In any 45, 45, 90 triangle, the legs are congruent, and the hypotenuse is always the length of the leg times the square root of 2. Let's look at 30, 60, 90 triangles. That's the second category of special right triangle we need to talk about. The 30, 60, 90 triangle theorem says in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the length of the hypotenuse is 2 times the length of the short leg, and the length of the long leg is square root of 3 times the length of the short leg. So what does that look like? When we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, it says that if we can identify the length of the short leg, we'll call this x for a moment, then the hypotenuse will be 2x, and the long leg will be x times the square root of 3. That's what the rule says. Now let's see if we can make sense out of it, figure out where it comes from. First of all, you'll notice that anytime we're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We need to sort of resolve the issue of the long and the short leg. How do you know where the long leg is and how do you know where the short leg is? It would be nice if you could always rely on your eyes to make that determination. For instance, in this diagram that I've drawn on the screen here, it appears as though this is the short leg and this is the long leg. And that may be true, but appearances alone are generally not enough for us. So how can we be absolutely certain we've determined which leg is the long and the short leg correctly? It's actually very easy. I look for the long leg to always be opposite the 60 degree angle. And the short leg, of course, is always opposite the 30 degree angle. We know that from the inequalities that we've studied with respect to triangles earlier in the course. And so anytime I'm looking for the long leg and I need to identify it, just find the 60 degree angle. You might ask the question, wait a minute, what if I don't, don't know where the 60 degree angle is? Well, if you don't know where the 60 degree angle is, then you don't know that you're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and then it wouldn't be proper to apply this rule anyway. The second thing we need to point out is when we look at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you'll notice if you take and make two of those identical triangles and put them back to back, so to speak, that is long leg to long leg, so that they share the long leg, if this is 60 and this is 30 and that's 30, and this is 60, and of course these are both right angles. You can see pretty quickly that what we're dealing with here is actually an equiangular triangle or equilateral triangle. So this is 30 plus 30, which is 60, 60, 60, and therefore this is in fact an equilateral equiangular triangle. That leads us to the very first part of this rule. It says the length of the hypotenuse is two times the length of the short leg. Where does that come from? Well, if you look at this triangle as a whole, we know, for instance, that if this is x, then this must be x, and this must be x, which means this is 1 half x. Well, if we run that from another perspective, let's just look at that slightly differently. If this is x, then this is x, which means this is 2x and 2x. So that's where the first part of the rule comes from. It's very straightforward. The length of the hypotenuse in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is always twice the length of the short leg. Now we need to deal with this long leg. And in order to do that, we'll resort to the Pythagorean theorem. So the first thing we need to do is just get rid of half of this triangle to make it a little easier to focus here. I'll just go ahead and erase half of this. Now we have this where we're trying to find B, I'll call it. B is the height of the triangle or the long leg. So we'll put this into the Pythagorean theorem. We know that x squared plus b squared is equal to 2x squared. Notice we need parentheses here. If we don't put the parentheses, we'll be making a mistake because then the exponent will only apply to the x and not to the 2 and the x. Now to simplify, x squared plus b squared is equal to 4x squared. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. So we can subtract x squared from each side. We end up with b squared equals 3x squared. We'll take the square root of each side. I end up with b on the left is equal to, this is a perfect square. The square root of x squared is simply x. 
And of course, the square root of 3 is irrational, so we leave that in the radical. b is equal to x times the square root of 3. And that is the second part of our rule. It says the length of the long leg is square root of 3 times the length of the short leg. Let's look at a couple examples. Find x and y. Here's the first example. We know that the short leg is 5, so we can reason from there to the hypotenuse by doubling it. x is equal to 10. And we can reason from the short leg to the long leg by multiplying it times the square root of 3. 5 square root of 3. So that's our answer. x equals 10. y equals 5 square root of 3. Here's another example. Again, find x and y. In this case, we start with a slightly different position. Here we know the hypotenuse, so we need to reason backwards. So we know that the hypotenuse is always equal to twice the short leg. So to solve this, we just divide by 2, divide by 2. x is equal to 2.5. Now what about the long leg? Now that we've found the short leg, it's very easy to reason over to the long leg y equals 2.5 times the square root of 3. And that's our answer. The third example here, we have the long leg, and we need to find the hypotenuse in the short leg. Um, there, there is a way to derive a simple formula to get from long leg to hypotenuse, but it's not something we generally talk about because it's, it's probably easier just to reason from long leg down to short leg and then back up to hypotenuse that way. Uh, so we do take the long way around, but we do that uh, so that we don't have to memorize a third rule or a third part to the theorem. So how do we get from long leg to short leg? That's the first question. Well, we know that the long leg, 7, is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. To solve for y, we simply divide both sides by the square root of 3. And y is equal to 7 over the square root of 3. Of course, that's not in simplest radical form, so let's fix that. Multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. And we end up with 7 square root of 3 over 3. 7 square root of 3 over 3. Not the friendliest number we've ever seen, but probably not the least friendly either. That's the answer. Now, the next thing we need to do is figure out what x is. x, of course, the hypotenuse, is equal to twice that value of y. So x is equal to 14 square root of 3 over 3, and that's in simplest radical form. Those are the rules that we typically use for special right triangles. Remember, there are two types of special right triangles, 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90. Also remember that the rules are different numerically. One deals with the square root of 2, and one deals with the square root of 3. So make sure you find a way to keep those straight. Otherwise, make sure you do a few practice problems. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email.